Hard facts about reality are actually pretty meaningless to your own life. This is a pretty brutal statement. I personally think we're living in great times. We have a lot of freedom and we don't have to follow religious dogma anymore. We have freedom of speech and you don't get hanged if you say something that doesn't align with a certain belief. We are very materialistic. And while on its core this might be a good thing, I also believe that there comes some flaws with it. So in this video I want to explain why the hard facts of reality or the so-called hard facts that are so important for you are actually not that important. Because what I'm saying is that most of what you experience is relative. It doesn't depend on hard facts. This goes for most things like for example being helpless, being successful or being afraid. If you think about it then all of these things are highly, highly subjective. Let's go through some examples and by the end of this video you'll probably understand that most of the stuff that you experience is really subjective and that reality is only what you make of it. Reality is not the same for all of us. Each one of us experiences reality differently and for each one of us reality is something different. Let's start for example with being helpless or feeling helpless because most of the time we just feel helpless. We're in a situation and we're simply overwhelmed. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We just think to ourselves this is too much. But is it really too much? Are the hard facts really aligned and is reality really saying screw you? Or are we just feeling helpless because that is our interpretation of reality? You could feel helpless in many situations. Think for example about having a lot of exams coming up. Maybe you feel overwhelmed and you just can't deal with it. It's just too much for you to handle. But is it really too much in reality or is that just your interpretation of what you're given? In reality you probably had plenty of time to prepare for your exams. In reality you probably have all of the resources right at your hand. All of the resources, a lot of stuff on the internet and most of it is even freely available. So is it really that you are helpless or is it that you feel helpless? I think most of the time it's that we just feel helpless. We are not really helpless. For example, maybe another student in the exactly same situation is probably not going to experience this helplessness because He's more of these people, these rare people that actually prepare in advance, that get everything done, the people that just try to nail everything. Unluckily you and me were probably not some of these people so we have to go through the struggle of actually grinding through exams and shit like that. An example of really being helpless would be for example if you're locked up, if you can't move freely, if you have no room for decisions, if you're caged and that's it. That's where you might be really helpless. And even then you're just helpless on a physical level. You can still do your own thoughts, think what you want and so on and so forth. So on a mental level even then you could be free. But you're probably going to decide to think I'm locked up, I'm not free. It's your interpretation of reality. If you for example have an animal that has been living in a cage for a very long time and it just gets into a cage that is drastically bigger, then all of a sudden this animal might sense a little bit of freedom. Guys before we continue, may I ask you to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video so far. I really appreciate your help. Same thing could go for prisoners who've been living in very tiny cells and all of a sudden they just get a little bit of freedom. All of a sudden they could feel a little bit more free. Well for us this would still be a helpless locked up situation. It all depends on perspective and your interpretation of reality. But let's get to the second example which is being successful. What does being successful mean? To you it could mean fame, being a celebrity, being rich, having a lot of women. To other people it might mean living life in accordance to nature, producing as little waste as you possibly can, having a good ecological footprint and doing something for homeless people. Success also is not something that is final. It doesn't depend on the facts of reality. It depends on your perception. Success is what you make of it. If you feel unsuccessful then that's because 
you make the interpretation of your life as a failure. That's you saying, okay, I fucked up in my life. That's not saying, okay, I've done this, I've done that. It hasn't been going so badly. I actually achieved something. But this really boils down to your mindset and how you think about the stuff that you experience. Would you like to see the negative things or would you like to see the positive things? Because there are always negative and positive things. I, for example, could get highly irritated by my neighbor hammering against the wall. But I think this is a perfect example where I can show, hey, I could see the negative thing and interpret this as something that is highly distracting and screwing me over when I want to record a video. Or I could say, okay, the hard fact is my neighbor is hammering against the wall because maybe she's trying to hang up a new picture, a new painting. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, how can I integrate this into my video? So on the spot, I made the decision, okay, it's going to be part of the video. It's a good thing that happened right there. On the other hand, I could also say, screw this, I'm not going to record like this, I can't focus, I can't do this, I can't do that. Why is everything so miserable? It all depends on your interpretation of reality. In fact, if you're living in the town, even if you have communication online, you're never really lonely, you're never really offline, you're never really cut off from society. So you don't really know what it means to really be alone, lonely, lost, whatever. But you can make out of it that you feel lonely. You experience reality as being lonely. You have the opportunity to go out, to meet people, to get into a relationship, to find new friends. But you decide to say, okay, I'm being lonely right here. I feel lonely instead of doing something against it. Two different people in the exact same situation react drastically differently. For example, if I have to hold a presentation in front of a hundred people, I'm going to panic because that really makes me nervous. You might not think of me like that, but speaking to a camera is a lot different than actually speaking in front of people. And speaking in front of people makes me goddamn nervous. But if you have a famous speaker, then for him, a hundred people, that's nothing. His interpretation of reality just is drastically different from my interpretation. The point being, it all depends on the perspective. Reality is not really what we think it is. Yeah, there are certainly hard facts like, I don't know, gravity and this is wood. It's pretty hard and can't change that. But everything else, or at least most other things that we experience as human beings are absolutely 100% subjective. You shape your own reality by the thoughts you have. Short little break. Are you subscribed already? If not, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you're not missing out on any future videos. And the video continues in three, two, one. And yes, I'm not denying that society might have influenced you in ways that you couldn't really change. Society might have ingrained beliefs into you that you simply couldn't change. Your philosophy, your parents, your family, all of these things influence you in the way that you interpret reality today the way you do. If any of these things wouldn't have happened, then you might see reality from a drastically different perspective. So by now we know that most experiences that we have are very subjective and relative because we make our own interpretation of reality. But even the hard facts, like for example, this table, this wood, are highly dependent upon the perspective. Some people that work with wood might think drastically different of this table than I do. They see different things. They see how it's fabricated, they see how it's produced and so on and so forth. If I have this scissor, then for me, I see it in a very neutral spot. It doesn't have any negative uh, connotation for me. It also doesn't have a positive connotation for me. But if you, for example, have a suicidal person, someone who used to cut themselves with a scissor or something like that, then this might have very negative connotations. If you, on the other hand, work with an artist that used to produce art using a lot of scissors, then this might have a very positive connotation. So even the very, very hard facts, like the objects that are around us, have a subjective interpretation that we automatically assign to them. If you really try to understand and grasp the whole idea of this subjectivity, of this relativity of everything, then you have the opportunity to really change reality because reality is subjective. And if you decide to make a change in your head, then this change is actually going to happen. Yeah, you probably can't 
think, okay, I want this to be a spoon instead of a scissor. That's not going to happen. I mean, technically speaking, you could probably reprogram your mind and name this a spoon instead of a scissor, but the physical object of the scissor is going to stay the same. Still, you can change how you want to perceive it. You can change your perspective on the things. Not only on the hard facts, but especially on the social aspects. For example, if you go around town and people look at you, then this is just the objective thing of people looking at you. This is neither good nor bad. But what do you make out of it? An incredibly confident, good-looking person might think to themselves, oh well, they look at me, I take this as a compliment, I must be really looking good. On the other hand, if you have low confidence, if you don't feel good about yourself, if you don't feel comfortable, then you might feel judged. You go through town, someone looks at you and you're like, what, what's wrong with me? Is something not okay? Do I have shit on my face or something? You're going to perceive the situation drastically differently. Objectively speaking, it's just a person looking. You will never know what this person actually thought. You will only know what you thought they thought. It's your interpretation of the situation that you're experiencing. For most people, this is not going to make a big change. You probably still go through your life and you continue to see the things the way you used to see them. You're not going to make a change. But if there are just a tiny handful of people that actually realize how powerful this is, how important this concept of subjectivity is, and if they think, okay, if I can change my reality by thinking differently, by making different interpretations, and if they are open to do that and practice it, then you can achieve huge results. You can change your own reality, you can change your own life. You can go from being completely miserable to being quite fulfilled and satisfied if you just make the right interpretations of reality. And I'm by no means saying that this is easy. This will take you a very, very, very long time because you've been conditioned your whole life. You've been raised a certain way and you have these beliefs ingrained. If someone looks at you, you either have a positive association or a negative association. And unlinking this association to, firstly, just get the objective view at it is incredibly difficult. Going from, oh, this person is judging me to, oh, there's a person looking at me is already a huge step. The first one implies this negative thing that a person is thinking something bad about you. This, a person is looking at me, is just the objective fact. But most of the time we don't even see the objective fact, we just see our interpretation of this fact. And if you can just go from the negative interpretation to the fact, then you already made a huge step, a gigantic step. You probably can't even imagine what that would mean. If you just think about going through town and every time a person looks at you, you just think meh to yourself, whatever doesn't really matter, it's just a person looking at me compared to, oh no, what is he thinking? Then you have such a huge thing changed right there because all of a sudden you're not worrying that much anymore. All of a sudden your life became a lot easier just because you made a simple tiny change. This change will probably take you weeks to months to even closely realize this because you will inherently always make your go-to interpretation. It will take you a long time. But if you can make the switch, that's just a tremendous huge step. If you can then take it one step further and on the side, for example, develop the confidence to say, oh, he's looking at me, that probably means I'm looking good, I'm looking interesting. That means I'm getting attention from the people. And for example, attention is something that is highly valued these days. Attention being it either positive or negative is the go-to value on the internet. If you can regularly gain a lot of attention, a lot of traction, then you will probably do pretty good on the internet. All of your life is dependent upon your perspective and interpretation of reality. And I don't ask you to just believe me. I ask you to validate it on your own. You can test it because if you really go out and think about this stuff, if you really begin to realize that you can take the negative meaning of something and just discard it, then why not do it? Why not cut out some of the negative aspects? And especially the big, huge things that bother you, you're probably not going to cut them out fairly soon. It's gonna take a very, very, very long time. For example, when I was younger, 
I really always thought if people look at me, it's not necessarily a good thing. They're probably making fun of me. They're judging me in a negative way. I didn't have really much confidence. And you might say to yourself, no, okay, what the fuck do you mean? You look pretty good in this lighting. I've already received a lot of compliments on YouTube and I really appreciate it. But back then I thought I wasn't really good looking. If I don't have this good lighting on, I have really dark circles under my eyes, which don't really look good. And you might think to yourself, this is crying on a very high level. But for me, this was my reality. I perceived it as, okay, I have this, so I'm not good looking. The same way you might have a nose that is too big, or maybe you have ears that are a little wider, whatever it may be, you could think of yourself in a negative way, just because you're very conscious of this one negative thing. But a couple of years back, when I moved out of school into a new town, when I moved to university, I actually developed a confidence and now I'm thinking, oh, someone is looking at me, I take it as a compliment. I went from the negative thing to the positive thing. It took me a very long time. And just now I'm becoming conscious that this progress actually happened. And it's not that my looks changed or anything. It's just that I think differently about how people see me. It's my view of reality. The hard fact is I probably look worse than I looked three years ago, but I'm confident with it. I'm good with it because I just know that my interpretation of reality is the thing that matters. Not really how I look or how other people see me, but how I make the interpretation. Do I see something as good? Do I see something as bad? It's in my own hands. And I'm not applying this in all life areas. I simply can't. I'm still worrying. I'm still obsessing over things. I'm still afraid and so on and so forth. I still have these negative feelings. I sometimes feel lost. I don't know what to do with my life and all of the stuff that you're probably going through too. But I at least have the possibility to firstly work on it and to secondly also work on the minor things, on the things that are easier to change. The big stuff is probably still going to take a couple years until I really, really can change my perspective on it because it's just so deeply ingrained in my psyche. But as I said, if I can just manage to change these small things like how people perceive me or how I see certain objects or certain actions, behaviors, certain interpretations of reality, if I can just change these tiny things, this all adds up and makes a huge difference. If you think about it, how often do you go through town? Once a day, once a week, once a month? If it's once a day, that means 365 days a year. And in this time, maybe one person looks at you or maybe it's five people. And if you five times have this experience of, oh, this person is judging me, five times a day, 365 days a year, that's an awful lot. And if you always have this negativity attached to it, then this is going to snowball into something bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger. And you're going to become more miserable, more miserable and more miserable. If you instead just see it as objective fact, okay, a person looked at me, whatever. All of this negativity, this negativity of 365 days is simply gone. It's out of your consciousness. It's not there anymore. And cutting out this negativity doesn't necessarily give you positivity, but it makes everything more neutral. So just cutting out this negativity is really a huge deal. What can you take from this video? Well, think about reality and think about the stuff that you experience. And if it's actually a harsh fact of reality, if it's a wooden table or if it's your interpretation of reality, are you really helpless or do you think you are really helpless? Do you experience misery or do you experience success? Why do you make the interpretations that you make and what should you change? What could you change? This is not something that I can chew for you and give you the straight answer. You have to go about your life and really analyze and see where can I maybe make a little different interpretation of reality? Where can I change my reality? You don't need to tackle your big life problems. The really big things that bother you right now. Start very small. Start with tiny baby steps and move yourself up. Because once you realize that you really can change the meaning of something, that you can change your interpretation of something, then it becomes easier and easier. So start with the smallest unit that you can find. Like for example, people looking at you and try to think to yourself, well, this person is just looking at me. This is neither a good thing nor a bad thing. And 
the more often you do this, the more you can apply it to bigger things, to bigger things, to more complicated things, and you can also apply it more frequently. So be sure to do this. So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're still not subscribed and you still haven't liked the video, it's about time to do so because I've been talking for a very long time. My throat is hurting and I would really appreciate if you could at least give a little bit back and show your appreciation. That being said, the subscribe button is right here. I have two more videos for you that you could watch next. I wish you a wonderful day and I will be seeing you in the very next video.